Thank you, everybody, for coming today. Well, I'm looking forward to uh, speaking with you. Uh, like our illustrious host has said, my name is David Zimmerman. Um, I own a small marketing agency called Reliable Acorn. And feel free to tweet me. My Twitter's there. You can find me. Let's catch up. So I've been doing my own thing for about four years now. Uh, before that, for maybe about 10 years or so, I was working in several agencies around Charlotte doing digital marketing, SEO, stuff like that. Uh, while I was working for these companies, I, I kind of gained a little bit of a reputation. Um, and that was, my reputation was helping difficult clients. Basically, my job in my last agency was, this client is a pain in the butt, give them to David, <laughs> right? They were difficult. They were unreasonable, they had bad expectations, or they were just a jerk. I'll give them to David. If they last a few months, great. If they don't, well, no loss, because they're a jerk anyway. So luckily, I, I was able to help a lot of these clients, even if they were on the unreasonable side sometimes. And I think one of the reasons why I was able to help these difficult, unreasonable clients is because I was willing to tell them one thing that most other account managers wouldn't. No. This is the most important word you might not be telling your clients. It is a scary word. We have to admit, right? Because everything around us says the client's always right. The customer's always right. How dare you tell them no? Right? That's kind of a cultural thing. This is a, from some grocery store somewhere in the New England area. Honestly, I don't know how you could run a business realistically with this model. Um, but I think those of us who work on our own, you know, it's me and my cat make up Reliable Acorn. We're a small business. Um, she's the executive vice president of catting, and she sleeps all day. But this is the other reason why we're scared of saying this word, right? We are afraid that if we say no to a client, they're going to take their money elsewhere. And that's, you know, I can't pay my mortgage on good intentions. I got I to live. So we're afraid. Now, this might apply to you, whether or you not you're an independent freelancer. It could apply to you even in the case where you work at an agency. You, you might think, oh my gosh, my boss has said something stupid. How dare I say no to them? They're the expert, right? They're the boss for a reason. Why wouldn't they be right? So we're afraid of saying no to them. Or we're afraid to say no because we're going to be fired and we're not going to have any of this to go see the new Avengers movie in a couple weeks, right? <laughs> or more importantly, Solo. Yeah. When does ticket go on sale? Anybody know? Luke, do you know when Luke ticket? I, I, I keep asking. Anyway. <laughs> Point is, saying no is scary. But by the end of the day, I would like you guys to all feel more comfortable saying no to your clients. I'm here to empower you. I want you guys to take this concept of no and make it your own. And one of the reasons why it's important for you to say no to your clients is simply because it helps them. Let's take this word no and let's make it altruistic. If you want to help your clients, you need to tell them no. Anybody ever watch, look at the oatmeal, right? Oatmeal, this is uh, how a website design goes straight to hell. Which is hilarious if it weren't so true, <laughs> right? Um, don't look at it now, but look at it later, because it'll be funny. I had, I had a circumstance where uh, my own little oatmeal website design goes straight to hell, where a client calls me one day and says, hey, David, I want to put a picture of my puppy dog on the top of every page of my website. O okay. Why do you want to put a picture of your puppy dog on the top of every page of your website? Because my puppy dog is really cute. 
Uh, I'm not going to argue with you on that one. But how will your cute puppy dog on every page of your website help you get more plumbing customers? <laughs> well, you know, I was just kind of throwing it out there. I, I was just a brainstorm. You're probably right. I just, yeah, we probably shouldn't do that. You see what I did there? I said no. I said no to a client. And I helped them out. Here's the scary part. I helped them out by saving the client money. Sure, we could have taken time in their hours or their cash to, to put their puppy dog on every page of their website. But that means the next time when they had a really good opportunity that came across their plate, they wouldn't have been able to do it because they might have burned their budget. They might have had the money and missed out on a better opportunity. You know, you might not have small plumbing clients. You might work for a Fortune 100 company. You still have a limit of budget. You, you as the experts, can help your Fortune 100 company save and allocate and spend their resources more wisely if you say no. Saying no can help your clients. A couple of, um, uh, maybe a couple months ago, a client called me. Oh my gosh, David, have you seen? Our competitor has 173 followers on Instagram. How many do we have? We have none because we don't have an Instagram account. <laughs> oh my gosh! Stop everything. We need an Instagram account with 174 followers. <laughs> well, uh, just out of curiosity, how many of you follow a law firm on Instagram? <laughs> That's not a client? Or you're related to, right? Oh, oh well, well I, it could happen. And, and we could spend time and money and resources developing a campaign on Instagram about medical malpractice and get them 175 followers. But would that have given them any more clients? Maybe. It could. So I asked, we could do this. Or your AdWords campaign, which is already driving more customers, is only limited by the amount of money you can spend. So if you took that money and you put it in AdWords, for sure you're getting new clients. If we do Instagram, you might. Oh, well, you know, I'm just making a suggestion, David. I, 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 you're probably right. You see what I did there? I said no. And I helped them out. Saying no can help your clients with better results. And if you give them better results, they are going to pay you more. Saying no can help your clients. You know, you're here at WordCamp. You're going to learn a ton this week. You're going to learn about Gutenberg. You're going to learn about Gutenberg. You're going to learn about, you're going to learn about security from my buddy Steve because he's got a lot to tell you. There's going to be a lot you're learning. You might not be an expert in WordPress by the end of this weekend. But you're going to know more than your clients who aren't here. You're going to know more than the boss who sent you. Give them the benefit of you being here. And when they come with the crazy idea, say no. It's OK. In a way, they are paying you to be here to tell them no. You might not be a great expert in this. You might not know everything about WordPress, but you know a little more. Help them by saying no. There's another reason you should tell your clients no. And namely, it's that it helps yourself. Um, when I was working in the agency world, I was uh, sitting in my office one day with a difficult client on the phone. And they said, uh, well, they were getting a little loud. 
So I, I sat and patiently tried to listen to their concerns, but they got a little louder. So I tried to offer some possible suggestions, and they got a little louder, and they compared me to an orifice on my backside. <laughs> I, I was shocked, stared at the phone for a little bit until my boss burst into my office with the most angry look. <laughs> he points at me, points at the phone and says, hang up. I, I did, didn't really know what to do. I, I, I knew if I hung up on the client, the client's done. If I don't do what my boss says, I'm done. If I, I'm done either way. I hung up. Boss runs out of his, my office into his office. I hear him pick up the phone and call the client. And I thought, where can I find a box to throw all the stuff from my desk? Because I will be needing a box shortly. Then I heard him say, you are not allowed to speak to any of my employees in that fashion. We will no longer be working with your company. You cannot speak with David directly any longer. As we transition your company away from us, you only speak to me. You see what he did there? He said no. And that's why I want to work for him again one day, right? Yeah. <laughs> Having lunch with him on Tuesday. John's great. It's OK to say no for yourself. I know, uh, I know the struggle. Nobody pays you enough to abuse you. And you need to look out for yourself. And it's OK to do that. Thankfully, not all clients are that difficult. <laughs> Sometimes clients can be very friendly, but a little annoying. When I went out on my own, and it was scary to go out on my own, I asked myself, well, OK, where is my next paycheck coming from? I better hustle. And there were a few potential clients who came to me, and they were willing to pay. Yes. Yes, I will be not have to eat ramen noodles this week. But you know, sometimes the smaller clients, they have a higher expectation. And as I started to talk with some of the smaller clients, I learned really quickly that the expectation that they had for what they were willing to pay would basically meant I'm making less than minimum wage. I wouldn't have enjoyed that. Besides, it would have been hard to pay my mortgage with that. I had to say no to money so I could be happier. Right? It's OK to say no to help yourself. And I will tell you a little secret. Luke, my client, is going to hold his cover his ears so he doesn't hear this. But if you say no to your clients, you get to charge more. Right? If the client who asked for 174 followers on Instagram so desperately wanted them, they're going to take their money to somewhere else. They're competing with every other yes person out there. The service you're providing is just a commodity. You're, you're racing to the bottom with any old fool who will say yes for a buck. You're becoming Odesk. You're becoming Fiverr. But if you say no, you're giving them the benefit of your expertise. And that's worth money. You can say no and actually make more money because then you're providing more than just the other person who provides more junk. Saying no can help your clients. Saying no can help yourself. Hey, that's great, Dave. Thanks a lot.
no kidding, how on earth do you do it? Well, if you, if you notice something in common with all the examples I'm giving of how I've, with trepidation, said no, there's something in common with each of them. Don't really say no. Most of the time, you give them options. You could badge your puppy dog to every page of your website, or you could do something that matters. Right? You, you could stop everything, drop everything. We, we spend months building an Instagram campaign because you're intimidated by they have more people following them. Or we can actually get you new clients right now and today. You can refer to me as an orifice on the human body, or you can go somewhere else. Right? Give people options. <coughs> Let, let me hold on to a sec. Can I hold on? Wait for questions later? Cool, cool. So, uh, right now I'm working with a client. I, I don't design websites, but often they hire me to kind of uh, be a consultant while the website's being built. I'm kind of the Google advocate for the client to make sure when they're building the site that when it's delivered, Google can actually read it and will actually want to serve it in the search results. So right now I'm working with a client that's redesigned their site and oh my gosh David, we have got to have everything on the home page. <laughs> it's got to have a video. I need a slider for testimonials. I need another slider for specials and I need every image to render on a 4K screen beautifully. I need everything in the kitchen sink and it's got to be on the home page, of course. Right? You guys know what I'm talking about, right? Well, no. You can't have everything. But rather than just say no, what I try to do is offer evidence of support. I try to quote something that will actually help them make the right decision. You could have everything on your home page. And it will take 20 seconds for your web page to load. Google says you have three seconds. And that's the most someone will wait to view your home page, or any page for that matter. So we really need it to load in two. Or nobody is going to even see your sliders and your video. Give people options and support your decisions with, with statistics with research, with your experience, your expertise. Provide a reason why they should make the better decision. A few years ago, a client called, oh my gosh, David, we need a mobile website. That was the phone we used at the time. No, you, you, don't, you, you don't need a mobile website. Yes, David, someone wants to sell me a mobile website. I must have a mobile website. You don't need a mobile website. So, I'm going to support my data. I go to Google Analytics. Oh, well, I have 25% of their traffic at the time is from mobile. Okay. But not a single conversion. Nobody from mobile is becoming, even, even trying to contact them. So I said, well, listen, let's do this. Let's do a little test. We're going to put a little modal box on your, your, your site. And we're going to, it's only going to show if it's a mobile visitor. And it's only going to show a particular phone number if they are a mobile visitor. And we'll see how many people call you from mobile. And I'm thinking, yeah, this is great, right? Because nobody. Three months later, they had a mobile website, <laughs> right? Because we use the data to help us inform our decision. The thing is, Saying no to clients is kind of like working with kids. I've started working with kids again. These are some self -port or pout portraits they drew for me. I don't know why I have bunny ears in one of them or a black eye. I do not abuse the kids. <laughs> but if you've ever worked with kids, you know that you kind of get in this rut. David, can I do this? David, can I do that? David, can I do this? No, 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 no. I'm sick of it. No. Sometimes dealing with clients can be the same way. And the temptation might be 
She just keeps saying no to get off my back. I know what's best for you. I'm just going to keep saying no. The remedy is to support your reasons for why you're saying no. So when they really do need a mobile website, you can actually give them the good advice to do it. Right? Now, of course, we're, we're all mobile. But you see what I'm saying. Well, a couple months ago, I decided it was time for me to get in shape. And for some harebrained idea, I decided I would go sign up at my local gym and learn Krav Maga. That's me being flipped last Thursday. Uh, there, if you look closely, there's a blurry smile because it is a lot of fun. Well, a few months in, our instructor says, today we're going to learn choke hold defenses. That's cool. No one's ever choked me. I suppose if someone did choke me, I'd want to know how to do it. Oh, it's easy. And the instructor just said, all right, square up. Their hands are on your throat. You raise your hand up, tilt your head in, twist your body, break the coal, clear their arms, you're done. Oh, that's easy. We could all do that, right? Right? So, so okay, great. So my partner lines up with me. And he puts his hands on my throat. And I froze. I freaked out. Nobody had ever put their hands on my throat before. Now, it wasn't that this guy was intimidating. He was my partner. We're, we're practicing together. He was not getting mugged. This is, his name was Herb. He was not a scary guy. Okay? But when Herb put his hands on my throat, I forgot everything. It escaped my brain, and I didn't know what to do. I think Herb saw the terror in my eyes and let go, and we tried again. And we got a little better that time. We tried again, got a little better, tried it again. And, and by now, please don't try to chokehold me because I do it without even thinking about it, right? It's just so normal to me. And why do we do this in Krav? It's because the first time we ever someone chokes us, we don't want it to be the first time where someone really trying to hurt us. So we practice it. So God forbid anybody do it in anger, we're ready to receive it. The same thing is true with saying no to your clients. So let's practice our chokeholds together today. All right, everybody, are you ready? All right, we're going to practice. No, okay. I'm not a Krav Maga instructor. Let's practice saying no together. All right? So I, I'm going to give you some hypothetical situations that you may encounter, may have already encountered. Let's practice so the first time we have to, it's not so scary. Okay? Here's the first one. I have this teeny tiny little change. Can you make it for me? It should only take a couple of hours. All right, good. We're practicing. We're warming up to this guy. All right. This website design sucks. My kindergartner could do better. Why am I paying you? to do this shit. You suck. No. 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 Come on. Come on. We got to practice. You gotta, can, the first time you do it, you don't want it to be an anger. We're practicing now, right? Right. All right. right. Hey, I know the, the website's scheduled to launch tomorrow. Here are 10 pages of new direction in which we would like to take our website. Please do this by the end of the day. You guys are getting it. You guys are getting it. This is great. Here's my personal favorite. I have got this great project. If you do it for free, I can bring you a lot of business later. Anybody heard that one? Well, guess what? No. No. <laughs> but we don't always have to be so direct. 
when the person contacts us for the small change, maybe we say, tell you what, how important is that to you that we do it right away? Or can we wait till later? Because if we do it now, other things aren't going to get done. Oh, I didn't realize it, that. Okay, this can wait till later, right? The abusive client, they have options. If you can give me some specific critiques, we can do better. Or, here's my phone number for my competitor, they'll be happy to help you. <laughs> right. The website, last minute website changes. Uh, I'll, I'll provide an alternative that I learned at WordCamp Greenville a couple weeks ago. Let's save that for version two, <laughs> right? And the client that has big promises but no cash, I don't have an alternative to that because my mortgage company does not take good intentions. <laughs> so sometimes you just have to say no. Right? Saying no can help your clients out. Saying no can help you. It doesn't always have to be direct, but it might be the most important thing that you're not telling your clients. Right? Thank you all very much.